and welcome. We are with a very special guest. Uh, our, he is a lecturer for on G Expedition for G Adventures. It's Gerard Baker. Hello. Hello. We we've spoken before about Antarctica, so I want to talk now about the other pole, the mm -hmm. other end, yep. which is the Arctic area, and yes. specifically Greenland. Yes. How is it? Because I think a lot of people have an idea of what Antarctica is like, whether it's right or not. I think a lot of people kind of have an idea of what it's like. How is Arctic different? How does it differ as an experience? Um, well, in the Arctic, the animals are hunted. Not by us, of right. course. But, um, so they respond differently. And they range um, much further. So, for example, we'll look to find a range of, of top uh, Arctic animals, uh, the mammals. Usually a polar bear is, is on our guest bucket list, um, as are walruses, arctic foxes, ermine, muskox, and arctic hares, amongst others. And, um, but we, we have to work harder to find them. And um, there's, al there's also the scouting that takes place before we can go to land, because we have to make sure that there is no risk of bears. So the scouting team with rifles goes out before we go anywhere. Oh. And they'll, they might spend an hour checking that, that everything is safe. Um, and then we will take people ashore again for similar similar lengths of time, two or three hours maybe. Okay. Um, so it's quite different, and we're. It sounds silly, but it's more remote. In, it feels more remote in a sense, and maybe that's because to me it's less familiar, right. because I'm relatively new to the Arctic. Yeah. But in north northeast Greenland, you know, we're in a million square mile national park. It's the biggest national park wow. in the world, and we're in the biggest fjord systems in the world. 150 miles long into Scoresby Sund. Um, to visit some of the most remote communities, uh, the human communities on the planet. Um, so it feels more adventurous to me in a way, which sounds counterintuitive, but yes, it is because you're actually really having to go out there and look harder. Okay. Um, so yeah. And the threat from bears is as real as we hear. It's not so much the threat to us from bears as the threat to bears from us. Okay. Because bears are losing habitat with the loss of sea ice, and that's bringing them closer to human right. uh, communities. And uh, so, for example, we saw a bear next to a serious dog patrol station this year, which is the Danish uh, Special Forces Patrol. And um, you know, we wanted to obviously observe the bear at safe distance, but we couldn't land to get onto shore because the bear was there. But if the, if we encourage interaction with a bear by being unsafe then the bear might lose its life or one of us might lose our lives and okay. we don't want to be responsible for that so we are we do exert extreme caution but you know for for anyone to see a polar bear even at half a mile distance mm. is incredible we get much closer than that but you know only so that we don't interact with the bear they or look disturb it they look amazing creatures they are incredible creatures and solid they appear to be solitary but actually when there's a lot of food around, like a whale carcass, for example, you might find congregations of 100 or 200 bears, oh, really? which is astonishing. Yeah. Um, but we rarely see that. We'd see one, one or two a trip if we're lucky. OK. <laughs> you spoke about going ashore, and obviously the G-Adventures ship is, is relatively small by mm. normal standards. Yes. So, so, and you take your guests to shore on a Zodiac, presumably, and then explore or on a foot? Or do you stay on the Zodiacs for the day, or does it it depend? really It really varies, and we try to mix it up so that we, for example, might take guests ashore for a morning hike. Um, if we want to see a view over a glacier right. or get see a historic hut, a hunter's hut maybe, mm -hmm. and there are plenty of those in Greenland and Svalbard, which we operate as well. Um, but uh, other than that, we, we really like cruising glacier fronts at a safe distance um, and seeing icebergs. And if, if it's a nice calm day, people like to spend time photographing ice. Um, we, get, we do spend quite a bit of time doing that. Um, and other times we'll ships cruise because sometimes the best vantage point is yeah, the ship. And sure. if we're along the uh, bird cliffs and bird breeding season, you're actually at a good height to be there with the, the birds, and that's quite exciting. Okay, and you mentioned Svalbard and Greenland mm. there. Which one is the traditional leap or start of the cruise point? Um, Svalbard is the start. Okay. Uh, Longyearbyen is the, the capital city of Svalbard, town, a coal, oh, former a coal town? mining <laughs> town. There's not much, well, there's a, there's a lot of history there, which right. is great, um, but it's not a big place, and we'll, um, typically get passengers there and then beginning of the season when there's lots of sea ice we can't get her all the way around the archipelago because this it's frozen to the east right. but the west is always clear because the Gulf Stream hits it so it's warmer and there's more vegetation there um, but we like to get near to the ice to try to see bears on ice so we can observe from the ship 
uh, you know, which is very safe, obviously, and mm. we can see the bears. And we sometimes get them coming up to the ship and oh, really? having a look, pressing up against it. <laughs> <laughs> and how long is a normal itinerary in, in that area? It's around 10 days as well. Okay. Greenland is longer because we, we will spend four or five days around Svalbard area and then head over to Greenland, two days crossing, and then six days around Greenland in the fjords, which is just magical. And you mentioned the fjords because I think most people know the Norwegian fjords. Yes. But Greenland have their own, presumably, and are they very different to Norway, or are they uh, as spectacular? Or they're, um, they're the biggest in the world. Okay. Um, so, yes, they're very spectacular. Um, wider, sometimes, um, but you're talking 2,000 metres of mountains either side, wow. typically and the deepest systems in the world, at Scoresby Sund anyway. Um, and Greenland is certainly, when we go at the end of the season, is red, it's not green at all, because of the Arctic coloration of the, all the Arctic trees, which are this big, they're uh, tiny, like really? Arctic willow, yeah, <laughs> polar willow, <laughs> Arctic birch. They're just incredible. You get all sorts of vaccinium, it's just scarlet, crimson, amazingly colorful. So there's and a that's the start of the season? That's the end of the season. At the end that's, of the that's season, autumn. sorry. Yeah. Okay. That's in the autumn. Um, at the beginning of the season, everything is still covered in snow, but it obviously it melts out and the plants will start flowering before the snow even melts and they'll you know, switch their life cycle on very quickly. And is there lots of wildlife in Greenland or is it mainly? There is, yeah, yeah the muskox um, in places reindeer, uh, but we tend to look for muskox uh, there, ermine, arctic hares, um, and uh, hopefully whales on the crossing because we cross the, the continental drop off. Um, okay. which is where the whales tend to feed. So we're always scouting for whales, just keeping our eyes open. And the season, we've mentioned it briefly, so the season is summer? So it, yes, it's mid-May through to mid-September is the Arctic season. And then the ship very quickly dry docks in Lisbon or somewhere like that, okay. and then head down to Montevideo. So yeah, For the start of the Antarctic, Antarctic season. Antarctic, yeah, so it doesn't get much rest. <laughs> so, uh, and you've had, you've, you've had a lot of experience of Antarctica and now of Arctic as well. Which is your favourite well, a lot of people try to judge the two, to compare the two, but they're so different, I don't think you can. I'm in love with Greenland at the moment because I've just had an amazing trip there. We yeah. had clear blue skies for six days and it was just glorious, driving zodiacs around flat, calm fjords. It doesn't get much better than that. But my spiritual home is South Georgia. I spent a lot of time working there and uh, I'd hate to think I could never go back. And for those people or those guests who've not been to either, is there an order that they should do it in? So should they start in one and then go to the next one? Um, I wouldn't necessarily st say either is best to start in, but if I was only going to do one, I would do the Falkland South Georgia Peninsula. Um, probably the our second one of the year, so after Christmas, because really? that's the one I usually do. <laughs> <I'm at me>. <laughs> 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 and uh, just because I, I think when you can actually see the plants in the landscape, it gives you an idea of, of how it was once completely glaciated, right. it's changed. And we, we do encourage our guests to think about the change of, of the planet and our impact on it as an yeah. industry. Yeah. And so we can see how the peninsula might look in millennia's time when it's warmed up and green. Right. And South Georgia gives us a staging point to say, okay guys, this is post-glacial, this is what the world is changing into down here. And um, it's a very thought-provoking place. Sounds amazing. Thank you very much for, My for pleasure. joining. Uh, thank you. <laughs>